Isaiah 53 is probably one of the most quoted scriptures when it comes to the sacrificing and the death of our Lord. Whenever somebody's talking about the prophecies related to the suffering of the Messiah, this is one of the first places that uh, the individual will go to look at it. In verse 5, we read, uh, and we, we are in, given an interesting word to, to ponder. Verse 5 of Isaiah 53 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep, sheep have gone astray, we have turned one every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Hebrew word there for iniquity is pronounced avon. It is an interesting word, and it's interesting because it is translated a couple of different ways by the different translators from the original Hebrew. The definition that uh, Strong's gives is perversity, depravity, iniquity, guilt or punishment of iniquity. So the idea of iniquity cannot only just mean the idea of the sin or the act of sin. It can also be referenced to the consequence or the punishment for that sin. In fact, in... Uh, the book of Genesis, when we read about the first murder, Cain murdering his brother Abel, God says, you are going to be killed for what you have done. He says, I don't want... He basically, Cain says, I, I can't handle this. My iniquity is greater than I could bear. God says, I will put a mark on you that anybody sees you, they will not kill you. So this mark that God puts on Cain, it is also iniquity as well. It isn't just the act of sin, it can also be the consequence of sin. Several years ago, there was a little girl, four years old, named Irina. And she lived in Russia with her mom and her dad. And they shared a single room apartment in a building that was so dilapidated that if it was here in America, they wouldn't just condemn it, they'd flat out tear it down. But they were very poor and beggars can't be choosers, so this is where they had to live. However, this small family loved one another with a great love. And the meager amount of money that the two parents made was just enough to keep them alive. One very cold Russian night occurred, and a neighbor got careless with the fire. The fire got out of control, caught the building on fire, and the entire building burned to the ground. This little girl escaped with her life, however, her parents did not. She escaped with her life, but she did not escape whole. She suffered terrible burns about her face and about her chest and her arms. She spent the next several months in the hospital where she suffered daily as her wounds healed. She suffered even more when she was told that her mom and her dad had not survived. Well, the time came when she was finally released from the hospital and she was sent to live in a Russian orphanage. Now, if you don't know, Russian orphanages are not known for their incredibly appointed, luxurious accommodations. They are some of the worst places in the world that you can imagine a child growing up. I read a story not too long ago where a Western humanitarian aid worker went to one of these orphanages in Russia. She walked into what they had as their nursery, which was a room that was as packed full of cribs as they could physically put in there. Each crib had a baby and some cribs had two. When this aid worker walked in, she was amazed by the fact that it was so silent you could hear a pin drop. Now, I don't know if any of you, I've got two small children and I know that even little babies, you're not going to be able to keep them quiet for very long. And here was a whole room full of, of infants and there was not a sound to be heard. The humanitarian worker was just amazed, and she asked one of the workers at the orphanage, how, how, how is this? How did you guys manage this? The Russian aid worker bowed her head and thought for a second, and through a translator responded, when the babies first come here, they cry like every other baby does. But it is not long before they realize that even though they may cry till their little throats want to burn up, nobody's going to come to pick them up. Nobody's going to come to coddle them. 
It isn't very long before they realize that their crying does them no good. So this is the kind of place that this little girl arena went to live. Children are children. This little girl had terrible burn uh, scar marks about her face and her arms. And children being children, she was teased something terrible for the, the whole time that she was there. It was terrible for her. There were many days where she wished that she had just died. And this is a four-year-old child. The teasings never seemed to stop. And what made it worse was it wasn't only from the adults that she saw this terrible act done, given, uh, done upon her. A few days after she had got there, the matron of the orphanage came in and said, tomorrow a, a family, a, a couple from Spain is coming and they're going to adopt one of the children. This was something that happened every now and then. So the children would they, they would all go and they'd get their nicest, cleanest clothes on and you know, they would go and brush their hair and brush their teeth and then they would go into the entrance hall and line up. And then the prospective parents would come in and look at the children as if they were cars on a car lot and take the one that they liked. Well, when the matron told the little girl and all the rest of the children in this one large dormitory that this was going to happen, she got excited. Oh, she had only been here a few days and she hated the fact that she was having to be here. I might be out of here just after a few days. The next day when the call came for the children to line up, she being a little bit clever, was able to get towards the front of the line. She thought that if I can be towards the front of the line, I might be able to get seen early and they might take me out of here quickly. Her plan backfired. She stood in line with a big smile on her face, hoping that as this couple walked down the line would see her, they would take her quickly. The husband and wife came in and talked to the matron for a second and they started walking down the line. When the wife got in front of this little girl, she let out a gas. And she turned her face away from seeing the ugliness of the scarring on this little girl's face. The husband didn't react the same way, but his eyes gave him away. It broke her heart to see these people looking at her like this. She was devastated. The worst part about that was is she was never able to forget how those people looked at her. She wasn't able to forget it not only because the children reminded her about it seemingly every day, but every time a new set of prospective parents came in, they did the same thing. They forgot that they were looking at a four-year-old girl when they reacted to how she looked. Every time the call came up to line up, Irina started working her way towards the end of the line. Because every time she saw that same look, it broke her heart. And at the point where she had been at the end of the line three different times, she quit lining up. Whenever the matron would come in and tell the kids, tomorrow we've got a new family coming in, all of the children would get excited. It would break her heart. She would become depressed. And when the call came for everyone to line up, the kids would all go and get in the front entry hall and line up. She would go into an attic and find a corner and start crying. She would cry herself to sleep, and sometimes she even missed dinner. This was a terrible time for this precious little girl who had once been a little beautiful, charming little girl. 